everybody, it's Glenn back in this video with the third and final part of Deadpool action figure Evolution, which will bring us not only bang up to date, but I'll also be inviting you to grab your crystal balls as we take a look into the future. But before then, let's turn the clock back to where part two ended and 2011, which saw the release of the Marvel Universe greatest battles, comic packs, Deadpool and Taskmaster. The pack recreating in free and free quarter inch plastic, the battle between the two from 2007's Cable and Deadpool number 36. The following year, the packaging of the Terax Builder Figure Wave trumpeted the return of Marvel Legends. Not that they'd ever gone away completely, but Legends had certainly been on life support for a number of years. But perhaps that would change with 2012 seeing the first regular, non-store exclusive Builder Figure Wave to be released since 2008. So in the return with the third wave dubbed Epic Heroes came the 6 inch scale Uncanny X-Force Deadpool. And as we look at the great artwork from the packaging back we see Deadpool is like one of us, a crazy grown man playing with toys. Well I won't speak for all of you, so he's like me at least anyway. Other than the grey suit and menacing red eyes, he is exactly as the two Deadpools we had previously got in the Toys R Us exclusive 2 packs from 2010. Completing the trinity of costumes that are most often seen seen across various merchandise. Remember from part two the year prior also saw the release of a three and three quarter inch X-Force Deadpool? Which yes, as some of you spotted, mine is a cheap bootleg. Hey, for the sake of my wallet, I had to cut a few corners to bring you these videos. So then for the uniform to be rendered as a six inch legend seemed like a logical progression, but something began to smell a bit strange about the return of Marvel Legends, with as I said, the wave Deadpool was included in being dubbed Epic Heroes, and dubbed that because the wave was without a builder figure? Hmm, suspicious, but instead each figure got the the same generic display base? Yay. Then this Deadpool was set to get a variant of him in his more classic red costume, essentially a re-release of the Toys R Us 2 pack one, but nonetheless needed as supply of Marvel Legends Deadpools never seems to meet demand. And as suspicion mounted about the success of the return of Marvel Legends, we got nothing. Then out of nowhere... In late 2013 in a discount chain in the UK with my camera in hand and my good friend Craig at my side, to my bewilderment there they were. Yep, as much as many a collector wanted them it seems the wave with its variants, Doctor Doom getting his white future foundation costume too, had been quietly shunted off to a discount store, fortunately on the shores of the country I live. However, Blade and Moonstar, which were set to be the running changes for Punisher and Mystique to this very day still remain missing in action. A shame as I fancy a new Marvel Legends Blade, so Hasbro get on it. Also in 2013, San Diego Comic Con saw the release of quite a unique Marvel Universe exclusive in the form of a taco truck packaged Deadpool core set, with the figures of the set then coming inside it in taco style blister cards. Alongside Deadpool were his alternate reality female counterpart, Lady Deadpool, one of the alien elders of the universe, the champion in the guise of Champion Pool, and more alternate reality Deadpools in the form of Kid Pool, Dog Pool, and Squirrel Pool. People earned a paycheck to make those up, that's the job I want. In 2014, Hasbro gave birth to the Marvel superhero mashers, and while some might have preferred to drown them at birth, for me they've become quite the guilty pleasure. But they're certainly not made with the adult collector in mind, but shock horror, toys are for kids too. In this case, 4 plus. So the character being marketed towards the weeest of nippers, not just here but earlier in the form of a couple of Marvel Superhero Squad figures too, does lend some foundation to the parents who bleated complaints about the R rating of the Deadpool movie and their darling little angels not being able to see it. But then when I get an alternate R rating cut of Alvin and the Chipmunks the road chip is when those kitty winkles can get a PG rating of the Deadpool movie. Until then, parents, you'll just have to learn to tell your kids no. 
It's likely the stylized proportions that make Masha's so divisive, yet to my eye the head sculpt certainly captures a certain spirit of the character. Plus it has that ankle rocker pivot that I love, meaning for kids toys which often have all the playability of lumps of plastic to be smashed into each other, this one is surprisingly poseable, achieving many a pose you'd usually need to pick up a Marvel Legends for. Then he comes with his signature katana swords that plug into his back, and via ports placed around the body we jump the shark with them also able to plug into his shins and shoulders. Then he also comes with what I assume are a series of ninja style throwing stars, and finally using the term loosely, a gun, which can be holstered on his hip. Just good luck with taking a stroll with that strapped to your leg. But why take a stroll when it's time to line up some targets and put the missile firing action to the test? All that and I've not even got into the fun of the line, which is the interchanging of parts. To give you an idea of that concept, let's look at the packaging back and we see the other mashes available, then a picture of Deadpool rocking apart from each of those. A more direct illustration utilizes the Venom arm he comes packed with. Perhaps more logical had that part come packed with the Venom Smasher instead, but to try and force a square peg for a round hole, I can say maybe this is Deadpool being possessed by the Venom symbiote, but then a five year old playing with this probably don't sweat the logic of it in the way an adult collector such as myself might. Further still, Mashers have swept across Hasbro's other licenses such as Jurassic World and Transformers, all of which are compatible meaning we can mash to create Dino Pool or further Further still Robo Paul. Hey, they make as much sense as Squirrel Paul, right? As 2015 came to a close, the tables had turned with the six inch Marvel Legends now flourishing and Marvel Universe three and three quarter inch line limping on rebranded in the form of the Infinite series. And since then rebranded again as Marvel Legends themselves. Confusing, I know. Yet in the very last Infinite series, we got an X-Men Deadpool to keep his Legends counterpart company. As we've seen with his other Marvel Universe versions, this is much the same, albeit with a different colour. But then some of his arsenal does take more of a flight of fantasy. For instance, his handgun on the left compared to the one that came with the Wolverine Origins Deadpool from a few years earlier, now having more of a definite sci-fi twist. But if anybody can style out goofy big weapons, it's Deadpool. Then while not completely new, we get for the first time in regular release, the San Diego Comic Con Taco Truck exclusive half unmasked head which sees Deadpool in the sculpt and Deco flashing his pearly whites. And that more or less brings us bang up to date with the Deadpool movie to the surprise of many being a legit blockbuster. Having now seen it twice and wanting to revel in it further, I hit the stores and as close as I could get to buying anything action figure relating to it was this Mini Mate set. I even looked for a Funko Pop of Deadpool, yet I saw so many that all I could do was stare for a few seconds before walking away. Now Mini Mates have been a constant for a number of years with Deadpool receiving a number, yet now with his own series consisting of the four sets here. I decided on this set as it features both Deadpool in his recent Marvel Now incarnation, then Copycat as Domino. With as we look at the bios on the packaging back, Copycat being Vanessa Carlyle, a shape-shifting mutant who is the namesake for the love interest in the Deadpool movie. Now if I'm honest, Mini Mates have never really appealed to me, but if if you want blocky Lego style figures yet with more posability then they might appeal to you. Saying that though I do like the deco of Deadpool's face here and in some ways out of all the action figures we've looked at I feel like this and the Masher's head sculpt have best encapsulated the essence of the character. As for Domino I've never really seen her as the type of lady to flash a smile and Diamond might want to redesign the packaging to better showcase all the extra parts they come with as on opening I was quite surprised. Those parts include an interchangeable unmasked head for Deadpool, that's just great isn't it? Then not just an interchangeable copycat head but also an interchangeable body and hands just so Domino's white skin becomes copycat's blue skin. Alas, likely down to the tricky movie rights issue between Disney and Fox, the only direct movie tie-in we'll see is the Hot Toys Deadpool, which does look simply amazing, yet all that amazing sure does come with a price tag that will likely put it 
completely on my budget. Then while not his movie incarnation, we will also be getting a new Marvel Legends Deadpool as part of the X-Men Legends wave. A wave that I can't express how much I'm excited for. And it'll be interesting to see where on the spectrum Hasbro's latest effort will sit. Only time will tell. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me on this Deadpool action figure evolution. As ever, your support really does motivate me to do videos like this. So do it like Deadpool and give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe for more, and as I banged on plenty this part about mashers. So if that's piqued your interest, click this video for my mashers playlist. And I hope to see you all next time. Mm, bye.